What's up, friends? I don't know if you can tell by the balloon behind me, but today is a special day. It's my birthday, and I can't believe it. Another year older. If you can guess my age by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a special shout out. I don't know how to feel though. I mean, am I special? Uh, you know, am I getting older? I know that I have more aches and pains than I used to, and I don't quite recover the same. Sometimes I'm even a little forgetful. And then on top of all that, my kid gets me this card and it says, you're not old, quotes, unless you've ever turned an album over to hear the other side of it. Uh-oh, happy birthday, love Jake. Well, thanks dude, but no thanks. Birthdays are pretty cool. I mean, I can think about stuff I like to do on my big day, you know, maybe go to a fancy restaurant or get presents or spend time with loved ones, maybe even just blowing out those candles on the birthday cake. I mean, I think one thing that we can say about birthdays is that they are dope. But I don't mean it in the sense that you think. Dope just means to be cool or awesome. What do you like to do on your birthday? I'm sure it's pretty sweet. Well, just like birthdays, the original gospel was pretty dope. The Apostle Paul went through great lengths to explain some of these truths to us. In fact, the early church went around preaching this message about Jesus and the salvation that he offered, and it's pretty awesome. In fact, if there's one thing you could say about the original gospel, the OG, it's that it's a dope deal. Let's check it out. So check this out. If you're like me, you might be wondering, what's the big deal? I mean, uh, you know, maybe you're new to Christianity or you've been in a church before and you just wondered, why do I want to deal with all of that stuff? What is the big deal? Well, there was some people who wrote this book called the Bible. Uh, one of those was the Apostle Paul. He was a great figure. He's actually one of the most influential people in history. And he wrote this letter to the church that was in Rome. That's the ancient city of Rome. Uh, the church is the people that were believers. They believed in Jesus. They were Jesus followers. And uh, he basically, th this was his magnum opus, the letter to the Romans. He wrote it while he was on uh, probably his third missionary journey before he was arrested and then actually traveled to visit them in person, kind of in a different way than he thought he would. Nonetheless, it really includes all of his theology, just in a real deep and rich way. Uh, he's unpacking Old Testament, Old Covenant truths that uh, prophets like Isaiah or Jeremiah wrote about and talking about how those things saw their fulfillment in Jesus. But in order to do so, he really paints a pretty grim picture. He expresses that all of humanity, whether we're Jew or Gentile, man, woman, slave free, we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of God's glory. That means like we can't measure up. I hate to break the news to you today, but you can't measure up either apart from God. And that's what the apostle tells us. He actually explains from the rest of the Bible and just, you know, human nature and our own understanding of things, which I think we should be able to admit that we're not perfect, that we need some help sometimes, either with life or just to make a greater connection with God. It's a big deal. It's a big situation that we find ourselves in. And so, you know, Paul is writing about this controversial issue. He's writing about the fact that a righteousness of God has been made known apart from the law. In fact, that's what he goes on to say in Romans chapter three. He says, now this righteousness of God has been made known about which the law and the prophets testify. It's a righteousness. It's a connection with God that is based on faith and not works of the law. Now you might be like me and you might think you're a good person. Uh, if I asked you today, if, if you believe in heaven and hell, if you were to go somewhere when where you died, you might say something like, well, hey, I'm, I'm a good person. I don't think God's gonna send me to a bad place. But here's the thing. 
None of us measure up. And I think if you search deep down in your soul, you'll see that what I'm saying is true. You need some help to get where you want to go. And so the good news, the gospel, the OG that the apostles telling us about is that God's made a way for you. And this way that he made is by faith, not based on what you have done or not done, but it's based on who you know. It's based on the person of Jesus, who is the fulfillment of everything that the Bible tells us, all the stories, the Old Testament sacrifices, and the prophets, the things that they said about the kingdom of God, it all pointed to him. And when we believe in this one who died for our sins, he was the sacrifice, he was the Lamb of God, and he rose again on the third day and ascended to God's right hand. When we believe in him and just put our faith and our trust in him, God's made a way for us to get to heaven. On my way to a workout and buying myself a birthday bar, protein bar, I love these things. That gets me back to the OG, the original gospel. And it begs this question, do you like dope? Uh, you know, it, it might sound like a, a funny question, but I, I'm asking it for real. Do you like dope? Not everyone does. Um, I'm not talking about the kind of dope that you think I'm talking about, though. What I'm talking about is do you like it when things are awesome? This car right here is a 2018 Chevy Cruze, but about uh, 10 or so years ago, they did this thing called Cash for Clunkers, and I actually got a car back then. Uh, when I did, the government was doing this crazy thing where they were actually giving you cash for you know, a piece of junk car that you had, and if the it was a gas guzzler and it, it would was worth more money, more you know, thousands of dollars worth uh, uh, than it was than an economy car. So when you traded that in, you actually got uh, treasure for your trash, so to speak. It was a bit controversial at the time. It certainly was a dope deal, though, and something people should have taken advantage of if they could. That's what the gospel is, and the gospel doesn't come without its share of controversy. That's exactly the way it was when Paul preached it. You see, he was opening up his letter to the Roman church by uh, utilizing this ancient Jewish text, and not a lot of people know this. I had the luxury of sitting under a Pauline scholar who actually had the original document and showed that while he was sort of setting the stage in Romans chapter one to explain that all people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, especially the heathen Gentile nations. They saw God, they did not honor him and did not choose to follow him with their lives. You know, he's really sort of setting the stage to pull the rug out from underneath the self-righteousness of his Jewish brethren. Basically, what he's saying is that yes, they've fallen short, but so have you. Because even if they've had a law in themselves and in their consciences which they disobeyed, so have you. You've had God's law. You've had the sacrifices. You've had the covenant of promise. You were the people through whom came Messiah, but you crucified him. So the truth of the matter is, each and every one of us falls short of God's great standard. And so this enters God's promise. This begs the question, why would God be so gracious and give such a good deal to a group of people who didn't deserve it. God has given us such an opportunity to know him and to know God. And I remember what it was like for me the first time that I realized this was all true and I could come to know the person of Jesus. It seemed amazing. It seemed awesome, but not everybody wants to hear that good news. That's why I asked the question, do you like dope? Because, you know, there's, there's a part of us that yes, we say, oh, it's great. We love when God shows grace to the sinner, except that when it seems like we're not getting what we think we deserve because we think that we followed him in a way that's superior to what they have. All of a sudden, dope doesn't look so cool. So where do you fall in that? How do you want God to gift you? What do you want him to offer you in exchange for your unrighteousness? I think he's got a better deal than you realize. I am.
am on my way to my workout at the good old YMCA. You know, I don't know if we realize the gravity of what Paul is saying. He's basically unfolding this incredible theology, this message, this gospel, this good news that Messiah has come. But the thing is, it's like he was there in the present, in reality. So it's kind of crazy. You know, the one that they talked about that their ancestors had, uh, you know, looked forward to, maybe even kind of questioned whether or not he was ever coming into the world. He was there. Jesus himself uh, when he was on the earth, actually went to his hometown of Nazareth and he preached a sermon one day in the synagogue. And as he preached the sermon, he actually quoted from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. He said to the people, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And so they got mad. It was controversial. The time of God, the kingdom of God is now. It's present with us. But just like he was present with them then, he is present with you today and opportunity knocks. The question is, will you receive it? Will you take it? Because the God that had created the world in the beginning and it's going to wrap all things up in the end is right here with you in the middle. And he's got a great purpose for you. That God, the God who gives you grace, the God of the controversy, he's the one who's going to reach out to you in your time of need. I don't know if you know anything about my story, but you know, there was a time when I didn't really know God in my life. And the thought of Jesus being real, walking the earth in the flesh, and then having a message that we could know him and have a relationship with the one true God was absolutely revolutionary to me personally. I feel like that same message is going to impact you right where you're at right now. You see, life has a way of catching us off guard. You know, it catches us off guard with things like divorce or disease or just circumstances in general, problems that come our way. But what if all of those things are put in our path to bring us and draw us closer to Jesus and his will for our lives? That's the truth. Opportunity is right in front of you. Will you take hold of it today? I don't know if you could tell, but I'm feeling it. And I think the people of Rome were feeling it too while Paul wrote them this letter. And, you know, he's, he's talking to them with some hard-hitting subject matter, talking about how they don't measure up. Now, it's, it's not the most positive message in the world, if you think about it, saying how we've all fallen short. He's coming at them pretty hard, but he's also talking about how the prophets explain this and they express it. They talked about Jesus before Jesus came. The fact that God was with us, the fact that God was present, the fact that he walked the earth, it was, it was talked about uh, by people that preceded the Apostle Paul. And so he references that. The prophets spoke of him in three distinct ways, but one of those ways was through sayings in places like Isaiah chapter 53, where he spoke about a suffering servant who would bear our sins and take up our infirmities. Another place where you see it is Psalm chapter 22, where King David talked about how they pierced his hands and his feet. There's some eerie similarities. Secondly, you see it through symbols. This is uh, people in the Bible who actually are sort of types of Jesus before Jesus came. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you had figures like King David who was a type of Jesus. He exemplified Jesus in his suffering, but also in his kingship. You had people like Jonah who died, who uh, was in the belly of a fish three days and three nights, just like Jesus died and three days later was raised from the dead. You also had Joseph or uh, Joshua. Many people in the Old Testament actually prefigured Jesus and they showed us kind of a little glimpse of who he was going to be. Maybe the most notable one was Isaac. He was the only son of his father who God called to make a sacrifice. Of course, that was just a symbol of Jesus and the sacrifice he would make for us one day. And then finally, there are shadows. This is actually pictures in the Old Testament system of things whereby we see Jesus. The author of the letter to the Hebrews explains to us that 
These things, such as the sacrificial system where we saw a lamb that was slain for the sins of the people, were actually just a shadow of the greater reality. That reality has come. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm a good guy, I'm a good gal, you know, I ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm cool with God, or at least what I know of God. I mean, that's what I used to think when I was a young person, and I would say my prayers at night in my bed, but when I read the Bible, something different happened. And Paul saw this coming, you know, he was a bit of a genius. So he sets it up where he explains that basically everyone has fallen short, or at least everyone else, the Gentiles, they don't honor God. That's what the Jews criticize them for. But then Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 2, you haven't followed God's law either. You're the people of the book. You're the ones who should know better, but you're not perfect. And then he explains this incredible truth by going all the way back to the beginning pages of the Bible. The gospel is not a new thing. It's always been around, and it's always been the way by which people come to know him. He demonstrated this by looking to the father of the Jewish faith, Abraham. And he showed how Abraham wasn't justified because he was circumcised, thank goodness. He wasn't justified before God because he was good looking or because you know he did things better than the next guy or especially because he was obedient to the law. No, it wasn't because of those things. Abraham, it says in Genesis chapter 12, was actually credited righteousness on behalf of God because he believed, that's why. So this great father, this great patriarch, all he did was have faith the same way as me and you, and he was in need of a savior, just like we are. So by telling us all of these things, Paul sees the arguments coming, and what's happening is God is preparing the way. Another major theme of Romans is this idea of preparation. Now, Paul is, of course, writing this letter to a group of people, many of whom he knows, but others whom are not yet acquainted with him. And he's trying to just describe what he's teaching and the things that so excite him. So, uh, you know, he sends the letter ahead and he actually mentions several people by name, a couple of whom are Priscilla and Aquila. They were a married couple who possibly founded the church that was in Corinth, and that was the ancient Greek city where Paul met them for the first time. They had been expelled from Rome under the reign of the emperor Claudius because he just kicked out all of the Jews. So Paul meets them. They're actually fellow tent makers like he is, so there's a natural connection, and he is with Timothy. He's in his letter saying, greet Priscilla and Aquila. Send them my wishes. So I can't help but wonder, what are the things that Paul is preparing them for, the good news that he wants them to hear, the things that God has in store and the work that he's about to accomplish? We actually know from Luke's account that it's recorded in Acts that the people were waiting for him in eager anticipation to hear his message. Now, of course, he was traveling in chains, but by the time he arrived, a crowd had gathered. And what were they waiting to hear? What are you waiting to hear from God? He's got a good message in store for you. Time to take a break. What a workout. We have been so far and we've covered so much ground. The apostle tells us all kinds of things, some of which are difficult to understand and accept that everyone everywhere is desperately in need of Jesus. But here's the thing, he goes on to say that everyone everywhere is eligible for God's great salvation. That's the gospel, that's the good news. It's made available to everyone, not just the haves, but also the have-nots. Not just the slave owners, but the slaves. God freely gives his grace to us upon faith. And so that's the good news. That's what we preach. Those of us who have been touched by Christ, we talk about it all the time and we share it with every opportunity we get. Will you grab a hold of God's great grace today? That salvation that the prophets spoke of, that's apart from what you've done, that can bring you out of a difficult situation. The power of God is incredible and it's going to help you no matter where you are at. God can reach you in the middle of your darkest storm and he loves you so, so much. Jesus is an incredible master and when you set your life to service to him, great things will happen. Boy, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I drop a new one every single Saturday and 
I'd love for you to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to get yourself some gospel because the gospel gains you everything. If you've never come to know Christ, I want to encourage you to do so. All you need to do is ask him, call upon the name of the Lord and say, God, come into my heart. In fact, if you say this prayer with me right now, Lord God, I believe in you and I believe in this message. I know that you died for my sins and that you rose again on the third day. I pray that you would make me new right now in Jesus name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want to encourage you to leave a comment because God has made you new and brought you into his family. I love you. Jesus loves you. And have a great day. Counts, yeah, they offshore. You ain't down with your surroundings. Then you gotta change your decor. Staying hungry like a carnivore. We don't go to sleep. We just go to war, man. Y'all get it. Yeah, we... Wow, that message is dope. Not too bad for a 42 year old. Yeah, we did it. Legendary, can I get a witness? Couldn't afford to keep the lights on. Look at us now, homie, we the litters. Don't you forever get your beginnings. Uh -huh. Never let the drive diminish. And on the way, when you lose people, what? don't repent, homie, just replenish. Yeah.